Thank you very much, everybody. It has been really inspiring, and uh, I think I will adjust to my thoughts based on what has been um, said so far, and I will be very brief as well because I'm very cautious about time. So uh, I would like with this short uh, talk to just provide some food for thought and discussion, and um, I, would, I would like specifically to discuss the uh, interrelationship between heritage and sustainability, especially sustainable development. Sometimes we use sustainability and sustainable development interchangeably. Obviously, there are differences. Uh, but my focus will be more on the connection between heritage and sustainable development and how we can, um, what is the way forward in terms of methodologies for capturing um, the, uh, that interrelationship and especially the impact uh, of uh, heritage-led uh, regeneration projects on different sustainable development goals or uh, objectives. So I think I can move my slides. Yes, I can. So the underpinning um, um, hypothesis or principle upon which we have been trying to develop uh, this methodology, and we will gladly be able to um, apply the methodology in, in recently in a very new project, which only started 10 days ago. Uh, but so I don't have any beautiful images as yet. We're still working on the logo, but uh, but I will I will talk a little bit about, about this project and and the whole concepts and how we plan to uh, apply that concept. So the underpinning hypothesis is that um, specifically I will focus on the built historic environment, especially in the urban context. This is a complex system. So if we, if we talk for, uh, um, about a historic city, for instance, this is a complex system which comprises of many, many individual components or subsystems. Um, and just to put it simply, we could say that we have, of course, on the one on the one side, the economic subsystem, all the economic related indicators, the social and the political subsystem, and of course, the heritage, uh, meaning uh, both the built heritage, but also the natural heritage, the landscape, the wider environment. And all these subsystems are in dialogue with each other. And anything, any intervention um, introduced, in this case, a heritage-led regeneration program, which is what I will focus on, uh, will have knock-on effects on a lot of those uh, subsystems. And changes on, on some of the dimensions, let's say economics, will affect the social and vice versa. So we, uh, when we think about assessing sustainability, which is what the theme of the panel is, we need to think in that systemic complex and also to make things even more complicated in a dynamic way. So this is not something static. Uh, static. Once you introduce um, an intervention, that will have a, a lot of knock-on effects on the long term, and it is a very dynamic interrelated system. So that makes things really complicated. So when it comes to how do we assess um, sustainability in relation to heritage, uh, it requires complex methodologies to be to actually enable us to capture um, those impacts. And just to give you an illustration, um, so uh, while uh, so we, uh, while thinking about this uh, from a theoretical point of view, um, we uh, decided to. Uh, with some colleagues from my department uh, at UCL who have specialized in using uh, the system dynamics, which is a method that is commonly used in um, initially in very physical engineering sciences, but more, more recently also in social sciences. In order to, and we use that as a methodology, which enables us to actually visualize, uh, that's the first stage, visualize before we go to the next stage, uh, the different interrelationships. The issue, of course, here is that we don't have much evidence. Uh, I think Alison pointed out that 
while there is uh, more and more information or data on the economics or the environmental dimension, what is actually missing vastly, especially from the context of, that I'm, I'm specifically looking, which is the heritage-led regeneration program, is people, like the social impact. The evidence is extremely fragmented and is actually quite poor. Uh, so, um, but anyway, we need to start from somewhere. So, what um, uh, I did was to uh, look on the one of the very few, if not the only one, in the context of the UK longitudinal evaluation um, studies uh, conducted by uh, researchers at the University of Oxford, who um, evaluated the long-term. Uh, social, economic, but not environmental. Environmental is actually quite absent from uh, these kind of studies. Uh, the social and economic impacts of the Townscape Heritage Initiative. This is an initiative that has been funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund and specifically uh, looks on funding re the regeneration of, let's say, declining areas through um, heritage conservation and through the adaptive reuse of uh, historic buildings uh, into different functions. So the researchers did a, a longitudinal study over a period of 10 years covering different areas in the UK and they tried to collect different, different pieces of evidence in terms of how the townscape has changed, in terms of the um, economics of, of each of the area, how many jobs uh, were generated, uh, how many businesses, how these businesses operated over the 10 years, how many closures, so like measurable um, um, data, let's say, but they also tried to collect some social um, responses from the residents and they employed um, a quantitative survey, which I think questionnaires which were distributed. And of course, there was a very poor uh, return of responses back. So we don't have really much data from that particular longitudinal study, which is a shame um, in terms of how people, uh, people's connection to the area change, uh, whether the profile, the different people, the residents, the permanent residents actually stayed there or they had to leave the different area. But there is some evidence. So there is a basis to start with. And so I used the system dynamics method as a pilot, let's say, to see how this can be used in order to try to map and visualize all the interconnections between the different social economic. Unfortunately, there was no any environmental data, but there's scope to include environmental uh, data as well into that system of a heritage historic area where we have an intervention such as um, the adaptive reuse of historic buildings. And what was interesting, and I will not go now uh, through every single interrelation uh, that you see on that system, but what I found very interesting was that, and that's something actually that uh, the researchers even mentioned in the report, is that um, as the longitudinal evaluation uh, um, included the period of the economic crisis back in 2008, they were in the position to see before and after, let's say, of the of that economic crisis, the situation in each of the areas. And there is some evidence, but we need more. Uh, and this is something that is depicted in that visual uh, diagram, that in those few cases where there was active local involvement, active involvement of the local residents, and where the um, uh, adaptive reuse was not just about reusing existing buildings, historic buildings for businesses or for enterprises, but more for responding to the community needs. So there was, um, uh, the, the, the first step was assessing the needs of the local communities and based on that, aligning the adaptive reuse to the local needs. This is the cases, and there was only one or two of those cases, that proved to be more resilient when the economic crisis um, actually hit the, the whole country. Um, so that was actually quite interesting, which of course merits further exploration uh, to explore more um, the dynamics. And of course, another interesting observation was that 
in those cases where there was coordinated, there was a coordinated uh, effort from, for all the different initiatives taking place in each of the areas, and there was a clear vision um, and clear goals, that seemed to work quite well. So we took that first pilot to see how, first of all, the methodology applied. And uh, we proposed a new project. Uh, uh, we actually proposed a, uh, we proposed a project for funding for the JDI uh, scheme, uh, which is a joint pilot um, uh, project uh, funded, co-funded by the Horizon 2020 and the different national research funders. In the case of the UK, this is AHRC. And the title is, uh, it's very new, it's very recent, we still don't even have a logo yet, we're going to have very soon, which is called Kurbasseri or the Deep Cities Project. And actually, as part of that project, what we plan to do um, is uh, to uh, do a lot of um, participatory, to employ the method of participatory system dynamics method that is actually working with the local stakeholders in the different case studies. There, at the moment, we have four countries involved, the UK, Italy, Spain, and Norway. Uh, so we have four different completely um, cultural geographical context. And we will be working together with the local stakeholders, including the, the communities, on developing and designing the visions, if you like, for the sustainable urban future through heritage in each of those areas. In the UK, the focus is uh, the area of Woolwich, uh, which there is a lot of regeneration going on. It is, a pro it is an area we have been working quite a lot for the last 10 years, also with the students, not just with uh, colleagues. And uh, there, it is a very interesting case because um, there is, it seems to be um, a disconnection, if you like, or it used to be, but now over time this seems to uh, change as well, uh, between the uh, residents who uh, have been living in the area for several years and those who are moving to the new development complex, which is just behind the town centers. So there has been a lot of social unrest and, and disconnection and um, resistance against the new regeneration on the one hand. And there's, uh, there has been a huge uh, economic and social shift in the area in general. And uh, exploring the impact of heritage in that regeneration process is something that we want to explore. And we, we feel that the only way we can actually do that is by employing this uh, systemic uh, metho dynamic methodologies in, part in partnership with the local stakeholders who are involved in those processes or who are directly related to those processes. Uh, because you cannot really isolate um, the components. You need to look at those components, economic, social, cultural, and environmental, all together. So you can stay in tune with this project, and uh, hopefully there will be more, much more information in the next few months. And that was it from me.